Hi, my name is Allison Komiyama. I am a regulatory consultant for medical device manufacturers. Previously, I was a neuroscientist and a molecular cell biologist. I also was a reviewer at FDA in the Center for Devices and Radiological Health. Today, I'll be presenting to you about combination products and how FDA regulates them and defines them. So today our learning objectives will be one main point, which is mainly what is a combination product and how are they regulated by FDA? First, let's understand how FDA defines a combination product. Per Title 21 CFR, or the Code of Federal Regulations, a combination product is a product composed of any combination of a drug and a device, a biological product and a device, a drug and a biological product, or perhaps all three, which means a drug, device, and a biological product. For 21 CFR 3.2 parts E1 through E4, combination products are further defined in four key categories, namely a product composed of two or more regulated components that are physically, chemically, or otherwise combined or mixed and are produced as a single entity. These are often referred to as a single entity combination product. Second, two or more separate products packaged together in a single package or as a unit. These are often referred to as co-packaged combination products. Or in the third and fourth example, an investigational or approved drug, device, or biological product that is packaged separately from another product that according to its proposed labeling is for use with the specified investigational drug, device, or biological product. Both products are required to achieve the intended use indication or effect, and therefore it's often referred to as a cross-labeled combination product. Sometimes the labeling of approved product for these cross-labeled products may need to be changed. There are nine key types of combination products as outlined on this slide. I'm not going to read all of them for you, but I'm gonna give you some examples of what falls within each of these categories. So examples of a single entity combination product where the components are physically, chemically, or otherwise combined include monoclonal antibodies combined with a therapeutic drug, devices coated with a drug, or pre-filled drug delivery systems such as metered dose inhalers. Examples of co-packaged combination products when the components are packaged together include vaccine vials packaged with a delivery device, a surgical tray with a surgical instrument, drape, and antimicrobial swab, and also first aid kits, which contain bandages and perhaps antibiotic ointments. Finally, examples of the products that may be cross-labeled when the components are separately provided but specifically labeled for use together include devices or products such as photosensitizing drugs and an activating laser device. The Office of Combination Products, or OCP, was established in 2002 as part of the Medical Device User Fee and Modernization Act, also known as MEDUFMA. Its duties include to be a focal point for combination product issues, to develop guidance and regulations regarding combination products, to classify and assign the medical products to an FDA center, to ensure timely and effective pre-market review, to ensure consistent and appropriate pre-market and post-market review, and to resolve any disputes regarding the timeliness of pre-market review of combination products. OCP does not review marketing applications for combination products. As needed, OCP assigns the lead center, which may be CBER or CDER or CDRH, that will have primary jurisdiction for the pre-market review and regulation of a combination. OCP assigns a combination product to the appropriate FDA center that will have primary jurisdiction for its pre-market review and regulation. As I mentioned on the previous slide, the three centers are CDRH, or the Center for Devices and Radiological Health, CDER, which is the Center for Drugs Evaluation and Research, or CBER, which is the Center for Biologics Evaluation and Research. Assignment to a lead center is based on a determination of the primary mode of action, also known as the PMOA. A product's PMOA is defined as the single mode of action of a combination product that provides the most important therapeutic action of the combination product. In some cases, the most important therapeutic action cannot be determined. For example, a combination product may have two independent modes of action, neither of which is subordinate to the other. To resolve these types of questions, FDA's regulations at 21 CFR Part 3 include an algorithm for determining center assignment. The algorithm directs center assignment based on which center regulates combination products raising similar types of safety and effectiveness questions, or if there is no such center, based on which center has the most expertise to evaluate the most significant safety and effectiveness questions raised by the combination product. 
Sponsors may request formal assignment through the Request for Designation, or RFD, process, or alternatively, they can obtain informal, non-binding feedback regarding their combination product or product through submission of a pre-request for designation, or pre-RFD. So the next question is, what type of investigational application is needed for each of these combination products? Depending on the product's primary mode of action, a sponsor may submit one of the following. If the PMOA is a drug or biologic, it would make sense to submit an investigational new drug application, or IND. If the PMOA is more of a device, FDA would prefer that you submit an investigational device exemption application, which is also known as an IDE. In most cases, the investigational application is the type that is typically required by the lead center. For example, if the drug constituent part provides the PMOA, the lead center would typically be the Center for Drug Evaluation and Research, and the investigation would be under an Investigational New Drug Application, or IND. Next, what type of pre-market submission is needed? Combination products are typically marketed under a marketing authorization type associated with the constituent part that provides the PMOA for the combination product. For example, depending on the PMOA, a sponsor may submit one of the following, either a new drug application or an NDA or an abbreviated new drug application, ANDA, for a drug PMOA, a biologic license application or BLA for a biologic PMOA, and finally a pre-market approval application or PMA, de novo, or pre-market notification known as the 510K if you have a device PMOA. A single marketing application is generally sufficient for a combination product. In some cases, however, a sponsor may wish to submit separate marketing applications for different constituent parts of a combination product, and FDA may consider this permissible. All right, let's review our key takeaways from today. First, a combination product is one that includes two or more different types of medical products, either a device, a drug, or biologic, that are combined. The Office of Combination Products, or OCP, assigns a combination product to the appropriate FDA center that will have primary jurisdiction for its pre-market review and regulation based on the product's PMOA, or primary mode of action. Finally, depending on the product's PMOA, the sponsor should submit the appropriate investigational application and pre-market submission to the lead review center. On this slide, I've listed other learning opportunities and links that may be helpful as you figure out how to classify and submit your combination product to FDA. Thank you so much for watching the video today and for learning about combination products.